Okay, people, I shall admit it. I'm a bit of a nerd and a geek when it comes to technology. And it all started when I was eight years old. I found my father's watch. It was an old mechanical watch with a red dial and a brown leather strap. I was so fascinated by this little thing that kept on going. So I opened it to see what makes it tick. Inside, there were so many tiny gears and a pendulum and a spring. But when I removed some tiny screws, the spring exploded, sending the gears flying through the whole room. And instantly I knew that I will never be able to put it all together again. It was really tough admitting to my father that I broke his watch. But instead of getting angry at me, my father, who is a physicist, understood my fascination with technology and experimenting, and he got me an electronics kit to build a radio. After a couple of weeks of work, I finally put it together, and when I switched it on, I could hear the music coming out of it. I was so filled with joy, but it only lasted for about 10 seconds, until the radio released some blue smoke and went silent forever. It turned out that I mixed up some components while assembling it. They all looked so similar. Well, it happens to the best, right? But my father still believed in me, and he got me a new one, a kit to build a digital radio. This time, I was much more careful. And when I finally assembled it, the display lit up with a bright red LED numbers. Hooray! But wait, the buttons don't work. And the display is stuck on showing 8888. So, completely useless, but at least it kind of kept up working. Well, many years later, and many projects, each being more successful than the previous one, I was able to build a robot that was learning to play soccer all by itself. And I got a master's degree in physics from Delft University of Technology. My dad was sitting in the audience, and I could see the proud look in his eyes. So that's how it started. And then, well, I moved to a nicer part of the Netherlands and got a job in a high-tech company that's pretty big in printing business. And for years, I was working on pretty cool stuff like 3D printing, machine vision, and in my spare time, on algorithmic trading. But I always felt like something was missing. I always felt like I was solving the wrong problems. Well, what are the right problems then? Things like powering and feeding our growing world in a sustainable way, for example. But I just couldn't see an opportunity to find a job where I could work on the latest technology and contribute to a better world at the same time. And it got frustrating to the point that I almost accepted that it would never happen until such an opportunity presented itself literally at my front door in an industry where I never expected it to be, the agriculture. You see, next to technology, I also love nature, and it was always my dream to move out of the city and live in a countryside surrounded by green fields and forests. Two years ago, I was able to realize this dream. As I moved to a little place called Schandelo, just near Venlo, it was springtime, and the first weeks were fantastic. Until one day, that I was sitting outside and reading a book, and I heard a tractor work on the field in front of my house. Curiously, I took a look, and what I saw astounded me. There was this great machine spraying the field, and the spray had a color of what they call toxic green. There was a light breeze, and before I knew it, the fumes were around me. And it was bad. I could, I could not breathe. I will never forget the sick, oil, diesel-like smell and taste in my mouth. So I had to get inside and wait until the machine was go gone and the wind would blow the fumes away. So much for the countryside romance. So while I was sitting inside, waiting for this chemical warfare to pass, I started thinking, what is this stuff? Is all our food being grown that way? Can we do it differently? And just like with the watch of my father's, I had to investigate. So, the first thing that I learned, and it really struck me, is that most of the chemicals that are being used on our fields are not used against insects, but they're used to kill the unwanted plants, the weeds. And the other thing is that 
most of the farmers really don't want to work that way. And for a number of very good reasons. First, the chemicals hurt not only the weeds, but also the crops. Secondly, after many years of herbicide usage, many weeds became resistant, which is now becoming a major problem. And thirdly, the most important one, you, as consumers, demand food without chemicals on it. So for these reasons, some farmers switched to organic produce, and many others would like to follow. But unfortunately, they don't have the technology to combat the weeds that can compare to herbicides. Did you know that there are hundreds of people who on a daily basis lie on beds behind a tractor, pulling the weeds all day? I think I don't have to convince you that this is a terrible job. Imagine doing this. And these people don't like it also, so if they have a chance, they choose a slightly less terrible job, like packing your internet orders in a warehouse, for example, where at least it doesn't rain from time to time. I spoke to one farmer who said to me, I really want to stop using herbicides. I really want to make all my produce organic. But I can't, because I, these people are too expensive and I cannot find them. If only there was a machine that could do this work, I would buy it right away. And I could barely contain my excitement, as I already saw hundreds of machines running on our fields, taking care of the weeds. This is what I'm good at. This is what I really, really want to do. And I know what needs to be done to get us there. You see, current machines are already pretty advanced, and many of them can already drive autonomously on the fields with just one centimeter accuracy. <laughs> like this one, for example. Uh, this is a solar-powered machine, drives all by itself. It's been developed by a farmer just nearby, in Limburg. But as you can see, there are still people lying there. And we need two things to make it fully automatic. First, we need to be able to see the weeds, and then we need to be able to eradicate them somehow. Well, as for the machine vision part, there is technology available for that, developed by Google and Facebook, made available through open source. It's called deep learning. You can download it from the internet, adjust the algorithm a little bit, train it with your own images, and get some pretty good results within a couple of days of work. I've seen many people do this. As for the eradication part, well, there are many choices available, like steaming, burning, or the good old pooling. So, just like with the radio kit, the basic technology is already there. We just need skilled people to put it all together without messing up in the process. And this is what I really want to share with you today, is, as in here, even in this audience, we have people who are highly skilled in mechatronics and software. We have people who have the latest knowledge of agriculture. And just around the corner, outside of this building, we have brave farmers who are willing to change their ways and accept new technology. So, what does this mean for me? For me, it meant that there was only one choice that I would not regret later. So I took the plunge and quit my job. And I found a partner who's just as passionate as I am about technology. And together, we're working on a machine that may one day make spraying in front of my house and everywhere else a thing of a past. So that the world will be better and a healthier place, because in the end, that's what matters, right? And it's not easy, but we are having great fun doing it, because there is so much to invent, and I can proudly say that today we are working on solving the right problems. So, if you're just like us, want to work on the latest technology and contribute to the better world at the same time, consider joining us and other pioneers in agricultural robotics. Thank you.